Welcome back to another segment of Health Talks. Women dealing with the symptoms of menopause often suffer in silence due to the stigma, but there are some options to help ease the discomfort. I'm joined by Dr. Katherine Scruggs from UPMC McGee Women's Midlife Health Center to talk about hormone therapy. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you Love for having you. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> All right, we have some things to really dig into here. Okay. All right, so. I'm obviously 33 years old, so, but a lot of people are dealing with menopause. Correct. So how do you deal with menopause? Well, it's different for every woman. Um, some women have a lot of symptoms associated with the menopause transition and some have very few. It's a very individual experience, but typically 80% of women will notice changes in their menstrual cycle as they approach menopause. Menopause is generally defined as one year of no mm -hmm. period with menstrual periods with no other explanation, but there's a lot of hormonal variation that occurs during that time, so women can experience hot flashes, night sweats, sleep disturbance, and a host of other symptoms. What is perimenopause? So that's that time right before your final menstrual period, which you really only know in retrospect, but it's the time when you're starting to notice irregular cycles and starting to experience symptoms. Okay, so can you make like lifestyle changes to help manage these kind of symptoms? You can do some things. Um, one important thing is to not smoke. Mm. Um, smokers go through menopause earlier than non-smokers and they tend to have more severe symptoms than, than non-smokers, so not smoking is important. It can be a challenging time for weight management, but managing your weight can be helpful because it's harder to suffer a hot flash if you're overweight. Um, and exercise in general is beneficial both for mood and bone density and just general health maintenance. Okay, so everyone's looking for probably a way to help. So what is hormone therapy? Hormone therapy generally applies to replacement of the hormones that the ovary no longer makes. After menopause, you don't ovulate anymore, and so the ovary doesn't make predominantly estradiol and progesterone, which are the main reproductive hormones. And the drop in estrogen tends to be associated with the symptoms that we notice, like hot flashes and night yeah. sweats. So when you take hormone replacement therapy, you're basically replacing those hormones in the body. When does it get to a point where someone should seek therapy, seek help for it? In my opinion, when it affects your quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, many women do report sleep disturbance and then therefore they have difficulty with concentration and memory. They tend to feel like it affects their jobs and their mm -hmm. performance. Um, some women just feel not like themselves and generally kind of miserable all the time. And if that's the case, I think it's worth evaluating treatment options. Definitely. And there's such a stigma around it. So another big thing is women always have a hard time, I feel like, asking for help. So what advice would you give to somebody who's, you know, maybe going through this but kind of feels maybe embarrassed or they don't want to ask for help about it because they're maybe not sure what's going on? Well, I think one thing you can do is approach a center like ours. Um, you know, we tend to treat peri and postmenopausal women exclusively, and there aren't enough centers like ours, but they do exist. Yeah. And so there are also some online resources, although you do have to be a little careful with online information, but there are there's information that is vetted and available to help. The North American Menopause Society, for instance, has a good website that can be helpful. Um, but if you can approach your primary care or primary OBGYN, usually they can direct you the right way. So what are some side effects that, you know, even if they do the hormone therapy, what are some side effects that they might be dealing with in that sense? From the hormone therapy yeah. itself? Um, breast tenderness can be one, especially at the beginning. Some patients get irregular bleeding, especially if they haven't gone a whole year without a period. But usually the side effects are pretty minimal and there are very, very few drug interactions as well. Okay, um, another thing. Tell me about the drug Vioza. So Vioza is a novel way to treat hot flashes. Okay. Um, when you go through menopause, there's a little temperature sensor in your brain. It's like a little thermostat and it narrows. So it takes less of a change in body temperature to make you, make you flush. And that's because of overactivity of a neuron that's called the candy neuron for short. Mm -hmm. Vioza blocks that neuron. So it's a non-hormonal treatment for hot flashes that isn't quite as effective as hormone therapy, but is quite a bit more effective than the other alternative therapies we've had in the past. So a lot of people are really excited about it. Yeah, I was gonna say everyone always, you know, say, oh, I'm having a hot flash, I'm, I'm going through menopause, but right. that drug will help. It does, yeah, it helps if, if the cause of the hot flashes is menopause, it does seem to help. Nice, okay, so what kind of services do you offer specifically at the Midlife Health Center? 
Well, we do menopause consultation services um, for both with telemedicine and in person. So if patients are experiencing symptoms, we can address those individually. Everyone has certain risks and benefits coming into menopause. And menopause itself changes our physiology and changes some of our health risks. So we can help patients evaluate all of that and decide what treatment is best for them, if any treatment. I mean, some patients just need some support during that time and not necessarily medication. So what's like, I want to know, what's the age that people start experiencing this? Like, what's the earliest age you've seen? Well, there's, there's a variant of menopause called primary ovarian insufficiency that's basically a really, really early menopause. And the earliest patient I've seen with that was 19 years old. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it can occur very early. And, but that's, that's definitely mm -hmm. the exception. The average age of menopause is about 51 and a half. Um, the bell curve is about 45 to 55 years of age. The, there's a big genetic component to this. The best predictor of when you'll go through menopause is when your mother went through menopause, okay. for instance. Um, but many women, even five to six years before they stop menstruating, will start to notice some of these variations and you know, some changes in their cycles. And that's the biggest symptom that you would see? That's the earliest. The earliest symptom. Right. Okay, awesome. I'm going to go back and watch this and just take notes. <laughs> you know, it's not my time yet, but that was amazing. And thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much You're for You're brilliant. Me. Oh, thanks. Okay. You're welcome. All right, and more information on Midlife Health Center, head to our website, kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh. We'll be right back after the break.